Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and our talks with Walt as we're calling our readings to the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We're in the Calamus section and we're looking at a little poem to the east and to the west. Uh, this phrasing of the word to at the beginning, seven other poems earlier already in Leaves of Grass has started with that to construction, right? And we have over ten titles going forward. So this is clearly something that Whitman loves to do. Our assumptions are that you've been with us at LearnStrong.net, talks with Walt, everything from inscriptions all the way to uh, pen in hand, the last poem that we did. Our background information here out of Norton's will tell us that in 1860, the first line of this Calamus number 35 poem read, quote, to you of New England. This was excluded, however, under the present title in 1867. This is going to be one more of those poems of geography that we've talked about in Leaves of Grass we've seen a number of times. Let's just enjoy it. To the east and to the west, to the man of the seaside state and of Pennsylvania, to the Canadian of the north, to the southerner I love, these with perfect trust to depict you as myself, the germs are in all men. I believe the main purport of these states is to found a superb friendship, exalt, previously unknown, because I perceive it waits, it has been always waiting, late in all men. Now, why he calls his book of poems Leaves of Grass will become self-evident in a poem like this. Notice we have the anaphoria over and over again, of uh, this two, two, two construction. Notice, first of all, we start to east and west, and notice they're capitalized. Do you see it? So in other words, he's going to encompass all of America, as he understands it. To the man of the seaside state, of course, Connecticut, think about his use of this in starting from Pominock 14, um, and of Pennsylvania, so notice we've got different, different areas, again, of New England being mentioned. To the Canadian of, of the north, again, uh, six times this word Canadian is used in Leaves of Grass and spelled this way. To the southerner, I love, so he's getting all geographic regions, right? These with, he loves this adjective perfect, perfect trust to depict you as myself. Notice the here, now you as the states, as myself. In other words, he's becoming a part of all of America this way. And then, of course, he uses the word germs. Now, this germs here is of or related to growth, Song of the, uh, uh, of the Redwood uh, Tree, he'll, he'll use this kind of thing, starting from Pominock, Passage 10, that's the echo. And then, of course, this word, all. Germs are in all men. D uh, the great Democrat, right? The great inclusivist thinker. He loves this, I believe, uh, type of thing. You're, you'll hear echoes of it. Of course, Song of Myself, Passage 5, I believe in you, my soul, comes to mind. I believe the main purport, that is to say value, importance, plan, of these states, notice it's capitalized, is to found a superb friendship. Now this word superb from Song of Myself, uh, passage 13, as well as Aching Rivers, you've heard this word superb before. Friendship, exalt, we saw this uh, spelling of exalt in Idolins, by the way, for those of you who are looking at it closely. Previously unknown, this is huge to understand Whitman's agenda. He believes that America is somehow never been tried before. That's what makes it so a remarkable place. And for him, it's, it's previously unknown. We've never known anything quite like it, is his argument, right? Because, he says, I proceed, he loves that word in Lisa Grass, doesn't he? It waits. That is to say, this dynamism, this growth, it's coming, it's coming. And has been always waiting. This notion of patience comes to mind, right? Latent in all men. Now this idea of latent takes us back to the idea of the germs of the related to growth. You'll remember uh, in To the Old Cause we use this latent term as well. For Whitman, there was this conviction that if only Americans could appreciate this latent tendency towards dynamic growth, all friendship was possible. Of course, tragically, Whitman, heartbroken, right, halfway through his life because of the American Civil War. And yet he still, he still wanted to hold on to this optimism. Well, what are we going to say about a message at 2A here? Well, America really was Whitman's dream. He somehow knew something important was coming. The friendship, of course, of all the states was his goal, his hope, right? At 2B, again, notice the construction of the 2, 2, 2 construction in Lees of Grass at 3A. To the old cause comes to mind, right? Um, you'll remember this one. To
to the old cause. And then, and then let me just remind you again of the, the final words of to the old cause. And, and that last stanza, thou orb of many orbs, thou seething principle, thou well-kept latent germ. Can you hear these echoes now? Thou center around the idea of thee the war revolving with all its angry and vehement play of causes with vast results to come for thence a thousand years. These recitatives for thee, my book, and the war are one, merged in its spirit, I and mine, as the contest hinged on thee, as a wheel on its axis turns, this book unwitting to itself around the idea of thee. You can hear those echoes in a poem like this. Finally, at 3B, what are your uh, views on this question? Do you think America has grown to a superb friendship? And do you think, in the end, is friendship... As, as so many great thinkers, Seneca and others come to mind, friendship really is the key to citizenship. That belief that we're all somehow interconnected. We're all in this amazing project together and always will be. Whitman would say, of course, absolutely true. Thank you.